guys welcome back sorry for being away for so long kind of got caught up in school and everything I'm finishing up my aerospace engineering degree here in December so I kind of got bogged down there for a couple months but I'm back today with a new video and I'm, I'm gonna, maybe a couple videos I'm gonna try to hammer them out um, so I'm gonna try to pick up where we left off um, I may have altered the file a little bit, so just holler at me in the comments section if I miss anything. All right, let me just close out some of this. I was working on some thin airfoil theory here, so let me just close this out. And we should be back. We are back here in the tutorial.py file where we left off. And I s believe that we we're going to go ahead and do the bat and crab patterns. So we're going to do it in the exact same fashion that we did here in the harmonic um, functions file and so I have them already lined out okay so I figured that you guys could do it yourselves cause it's really not that hard it's exactly what we did last time where for the butterfly pattern all we did was change these price patterns or these price ranges and so real quick I'll just pull it up on the screen for this one and you can see that it's the same price levels here for the bat and all I did again was I copied this entire butterfly function, name, renamed it is bat, and then changed the price levels. Okay, so that's all you have to do. Uh, again, I'll pull it up right here. Pause the video if you need to. Take a good hard look at it, and then here's the other one here. All right, so now that you have that done and down, let's go ahead and get those rolling in here. All right, so we should have this functioning completely now. The only thing is that we don't we're not having a plot, and I do like to have a little bit of a plot um, so that we can see kind of visually understand the performance of the algorithm. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to go ahead and construct a loop, or uh, I'm going to go ahead and construct something that allows us to visualize the plot and it's going to tell us whether it's a bullish pattern and what type of pattern and so what we're gonna go ahead and start to do is let's let's create an array called harmonics so we'll do a numpy array and let's go ahead and throw all those patterns in there gart but bat crab and again this is either gonna be a one a negative one or a numpy dot nan okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look through all of these uh, actually let's construct some labels first so we'll do labels and labels equal to okay so we're gonna use these labels in the plot all right so we just have a list here and we're gonna use them as a title for our plot and so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do if because we're, we're still inside this loop we're gonna check if any of these patterns if we hit any of them and it should only be one. Remember, we can't we can't have more than one of these patterns occurring at a time. So we're going to do if any of them is equal to one or any negative one. So if that is the case, then we're going to loop through and we're going to look for them. Like that. So we're looking, we're looking through, and if uh, harmonics, and we're now using the jth iterator, is equal to one, or negative one. So now, sense, and we're going to use sense is going to be if it's bullish or bearish, okay, and. For sense, we're going to use, I believe it's called list comprehension, but I'm not sure. It's like an inline if statement. Uh, it's something cool that you can do in Python. Um, that I'm, I'm not that good at it, but so we're going to do bearish space if harmonics j is equal to negative 1, else bullish space. Okay, so that's going to be the sense. And then the label for the chart that we're going to produce is going to be the sense plus, since sense is going to be a string, so we can just add another string to it. 
um, labels and then remember we're, we saw that if it was bullish or bearish right here then we're, we're going to go ahead and access what that pattern was for the jth iterator okay so now we have that pattern and then we're going to do another thing and then we're going to do plus space found so what it's going to end up saying is bearish something found or bullish something found if we do indeed find a pattern so we're going to do plt.title and that's going to be the label that we just constructed and then I know I keep deleting the plot that I make like every video so I'm just going to go ahead and like construct the plot and if we decide to not use it I'll just comment it out so so I'm just being stupid so we'll just fast forward this part alrighty so we should have the a plotting correctly there so I'm gonna leave that for future videos in case we decide to take a look at the patterns again but I'm gonna go ahead and run this and let's make sure that it's working correctly so we got a bearish Gartley looks like this was a failure uh, failure again failure uh, this was a success you get the point success success failure so later on what we're going to do is implement a risk management strategy that stops out our failures and allows our uh, victories to just continue compounding. So, so we're going to be done with that plot for now, but right now what I want to do is we need a way of looking and seeing, you know, if we were to enter the trade, say exactly when it finds the pattern, if that was a possibility, which in real life it's not a possibility, if we were to be able to do that, how could we capture that, like, how do we know when to get out of the trade? Like, when is the best time to get out? And so what I want to do is construct a little experiment here just to show you guys. And again, this is not something that we can do in real life, but we're going to do it anyway right now. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create an array of what I call pips. And this is going to be the pips that we capture. And so let's put 0, 0.0, comma, and we're going to do this 15 times. So I want to look at the 15 hours after the trade is placed. And what we're going to do is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay? So now we have 15 time slots. And so what I'm going to analyze is I'm going to see if we get out at each one of those hours how much pips we have accumulated and what we're going to do is we're going to keep this as a running total and we're going to plot that running total and we're going to investigate the best time to exit the trade and again this is a look forward bias if we were to implement this into our actual strategy because in real life we cannot run a cumulative total of the pips we would have gained and then decide alright well now we're going to uh, I think actually that's called a data snooping bias. So we don't want to actually do this in real life, but I just want to show you guys this. So I'm going to do this. So equal to one. So if it's one, then what we're going to do is this is a long trade. So we're going to do pips, pips plus equals, and we're going to do a thousand times because the pips is the th is the thousandth thousandth sorry decimal place for this pair. Okay. So the thousandth. Uh, times price um, end. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the price range, the entire price range that we're looking at if we were to get out at each of them. And so that's that right there. Minus where we got in. That makes sense. Does that make sense? Uh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's good. And then we'll do LF and now we're going to do the same thing except for backwards since this is a short trade now. So put this guy over here minus these ones. 
All right, so now we have that. So that's going to cumulatively update the pips that we have captured. So now what we want to do is we're going to up we're going to dynamically update a bar chart. So I'm going to create a bar chart of these pips for each hour slot and we're going to let the program run and we're going to see over time where we exit where we would have gained the most. So to create a dynamic plot that plots inside of a loop that we can still see it updating. We're going to use plt.ion and we're going to do that outside of the loop and then here inside of the loop we're going to come down here and we're going to do plt.clf and plt.bar, the bar chart on the x-axis we're wanting to use just integers for each time slot of hours after we entered the trade so 1 to 16 that's going to give us one to fifteen hours because mp or numpy dot arrange goes to n minus one um, and then we're going to plot those pips on the y axis for the bar and then to make the chart show up in the loop we're going to do plt dot pause and we're going to pause for uh, 0 0.05 of a second and provided we cross our fingers here real quick and run it and let's see if it works Okay, so you can see we're starting off immediately negative, um, but over time, we're going to see an increase over all of the hours, it looks like, except for the first three here. We're losing. Oh, we go positive. So as you can see here, every single one of the hours on this chart is going positive. That tells us that this is working quite well. It tells us that on average, we're winning no matter what we do, um, but it looks like optimally looks like between 10 and 14 hours 10 to 15 hours is the best time to get out of the trade so I could let this run all day but I already know what's gonna happen it's gonna continue to increase this goes up to like a thousand pips by the end of this running so I hope you guys enjoyed the video next time uh, we're probably gonna start on risk management so we're gonna develop a little bit of a method to um, create trailing stop losses and we're going to simulate a back test using stop losses, trailing stop losses, stuff like that. Um, yeah, so thanks you guys for watching.